Okay, so the first thing you want to do when you start up the machine is power it up and turn on the air and double click on the Autotronic software. First thing the machine is going to want you to do is home the axes. This is so the machine knows where it is in reference to the board and itself. It's asking if I want to load the previous file, and in this case I do. But if you do not want this file, please just open a new one instead so you don't mess up uh, the previous file that was someone else was working on. So you click yes, because I want to work on this file again. Now here's the menu, and all these icons up here at the top can also be found in the setup menu and other uh, menus down here. Everything is pretty much in these menus. So on the setup menu, this upper bar here, upper block, is going to be most of the stuff that you're going to use. There's some other things you can use down here. So the first thing you want to do is learn the circuit board, or in this menu it says learn PCB. So what we'll do is click learn PCB, and this window pops up. So here in the uh, learn PCB menu, we have the one reference point or two reference points. And you're always going to want to use the two reference points when it comes to anything, because one reference point just doesn't make any sense. So the use fiducials is what I'm going to use here, and that is basically for a panel. If you want to use uh, board offset points, if you want to do a, a fiducial on each board, you can do it that way. You pretty much always want to use learn reference points before production. Make sure this is enabled. Uh, learn the bad marks you do not need to worry about. And this window down here is for just a pretty picture at the end or for reference. You don't need to do anything with this section at all. Uh, but we can go through it and learning the, the, the size of each subpanel. So since they were already taught, I have it already stored. But while we're on this window here, you can see the crosshairs. If you double click somewhere else on the board, the motors will move right to it. So I want to center on the board here, and you can also step increments right here. So the movement is how many steps? 10 steps. It'll move 10 steps every time you press the blue button. Move it back to three. This H, click that, it'll go to L, and that's the speed of the motor, which these red arrows will continuously run the motor until you click the red arrow again for the middle X. And that is the same as right clicking in a quadrant. So you can right click in the quadrant over here and the motor will just drive and drive until you right click again. Same with over here and also diagonal and up and down. So that can be a very easy way to get to a point and then of course double clicking to bring yourself right to where you want to go. So get that centered as much as possible. Click OK. And up here in the upper right corner of this window, there's a reference field. And it tells you a short description of what it's wanting from you or what you're supposed to do or where you are. So right now it's asking to learn the upper right portion of the board. Click OK. And then it's going to say, do I want to learn the lower left? Yes, of course. So it goes to the lower left of that same subpanel. And there is a grid of four by three matrix of sub boards on this panel. So up here it says lower left, click OK again. And then it asks me to learn a reference point. Usually a reference point will be a fiducial, but there were no fiducials put on these boards on the sub panels, just on the border of the full panel. So in this case, I used a, a pad from a surface mount uh, device, which in this case is the resistor. You don't want to use any silk screen as a reference. You want to use a copper layer. It can be a through hole, um, but here in this case, I was going to use a pad. Um, that does not do anything with the alignment um, during placing, just for the, the pretty picture at the end here, since I'm using the fiducials on the panel. 
because you don't want to use the pad for reference during production because there will be paste on this pad and it'll look completely different. In that case, you could use a through hole and it would be more reliable than a pad. Click OK. And then the matrix in the X direction is left to right direction and they're also labeled on the axes, uh, the, the physical axes um, in the machine. And number of boards in the Y is three. So I have a total of 12 sub panels on this panel. So here in the PCB height block, you need to do an auto detect. Uh, that's the easiest way. You can either type it in by selecting this box or using the auto detect. So the first thing it's going to want me to do is choose a location. You want to choose a location close to the edge of the board um, and the edge being held by the, uh, the, the braces here because that is going to be your closest uh, accurate place around the board. You also want to choose a location where there isn't any copper, unlike these, these traces. You wouldn't want to do a, a height detection along that. So I'm just going to choose right there. It looks good to me. And again, up here it says learn height PCB. That's telling you what it's expecting of you. Click OK. And at this point, it's going down with the vacuum on. And once it senses the vacuum has been obstructed, it'll lift back up and go down slow to find out the exact height of the PCB. And then click OK once you're done. And then click OK to exit the Learn PCB. Then you can click Save. Every few steps you want to click Save, and this is my decade capacitance board, and we'll click OK.